Donald Trump's latest remarks on his hush money trial. The former president claiming he would testify during the proceedings, which begin on Monday. CNN's Kristen Holmes is joining us right now from Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach, Florida. Kristen, give us the very latest. Well, that's right. We just heard from a joint press conference with Speaker Mike Johnson alongside President, former President Donald Trump. And it was really billed as an election integrity. They wanted to talk about this issue of impacting elections. But the real news came after the fact, during the question and answer session with reporters. And I will note, first of all, I will get to the trial, but one of the biggest moments came right at the top when I asked former President Trump, if he stood by Speaker Johnson at the time where he is facing this motion to vacate by Marjorie Taylor Greene. Take a listen to what he said. We're getting along very well with the Speaker, and I get along very well with Marjorie. Uh, we have a Speaker. Uh, he was voted in, and it was a complicated process, and uh, I think very uh, — it's not, uh, not an easy situation for any Speaker. I think he's doing a very good job. He's doing — uh, about as good as you're going to do. And uh, I'm sure that Marjorie understands that. That seems like a lot of support for Speaker Johnson at this time. He also was asked by me whether or not he would support Johnson if Johnson was to put forward a Ukrainian aid package, and he didn't shoot it down. He actually said that they were talking about it now in terms of a loan, loaning Ukraine the money instead of straight up giving it to them. This is a turn of events and one that Johnson particularly needed. Now, let's talk about next week because, of course, this is history being made with the first time a former president is going to be sitting in court in a criminal trial. He talked about how, as you noted, he wanted to testify. He would be willing to testify. And he also talked about that jury selection process. Take a listen. You know, jury selection is largely luck. It depends who you get. It's very unfair that I'm having a trial there. I'm testifying. I tell the truth. I mean, all I can do is tell the truth. And the truth is that there's no case. Now, we do expect Donald Trump to make the most of his court appearances, and by that I mean try to turn it into a media circus when he can. There are no cameras inside of the courtroom, but he will be stopping by the cameras on the way in and out of the courtroom. We're also told that he's likely to do, at least on some days, remarks at Trump Tower after his courtroom appearances, like we have seen during those New York appearances before. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind, you know, we were told by the campaign that this was going to interfere with this campaign schedule, that they were going to schedule these campaign events on Wednesdays and Saturdays because he's in court every other day. But this upcoming week, he does not have an event on Wednesday, so he will be in New York the entire week. Wolf. All right, uh, Kristen Holmes in uh, Palm Beach for us. Kristen, thank you very much. There's more breaking news we're following right now. Attorneys for Donald Trump have just made a new request of the judge overseeing his hush money trial only three days before jury selection is set to begin Monday morning. Let's bring in CNN's Kara Scannell. She's got the, the latest information for us. Kara, what is this last minute request? So Trump's team wants the judge to alter some of the this one main question that he's posing to the jury pool. The judge said he would ask all the jurors when they come in and assemble uh, right off the bat if anyone thought that they couldn't be fair or impartial or for any other reason, such as travel or religious commitments, be unable to serve on the jury. Anyone who puts their hands up, the judge said he would excuse, saying that polling people individually is time consuming and doesn't generally yield any different outcome. Trump's lawyers are asking the judge to separate those questions. They want to know who says that they can't be fair and impartial, distinct from those who say they can't serve because of some other commitment. This is all because they're trying to build some data as far as their appeal goes. As you know, the, earlier this week, they asked, the judge, they asked an appellate judge to stop the trial. That was denied. One of the reasons is they've been arguing that Trump can't get a fair trial in New York, in Manhattan, where this jury pool will be pulled from, because Manhattanites have tended to vote a Democratic. Uh, they're wanting to build some data now for that appeal by trying to understand how much, how many people in the jury pool say that they would be biased against Trump, and they want to separate that from people who just otherwise couldn't serve. Uh, you know, the the district attorney's office will have a chance to weigh in on this, though it is just a few days away from jury selection, and it'll be up to the judge to decide on Monday morning how he's going to handle that. Uh, but everything for now is still a go. Well. Monday morning, we'll all be watching this jury selection as it unfolds. Kara Scannell, thank you very much. Let's get some more on Donald Trump's legal troubles with our senior legal analyst, Ellie Honig, and CNN anchor, Caitlin Collins. Ellie, how unusual is this sort of request 
to amend jury questions on this, the eve of the start of this historic trial. First time in American history, a former president will face criminal charges in a trial. How do you think the judge is likely to respond? Well, Wolf, Donald Trump has made a series of unreasonable motions that have failed throughout this week, but this particular request is completely reasonable and I think fair, and it wouldn't even surprise me if the DA agrees. So here's what the judge said he's going to do. He said he's going to start jury selection by saying, is there anyone here who cannot serve either because of hardship, meaning you have a job that prevents you or some other impediment, or because you have such strong bias you can't sit on this case? And all that Trump has said he wants the judge to do is separate those into two different questions so that if he if and when he needs to appeal he'll be able to say look how many people we lost out of our jury pool because of bias that will take essentially zero extra time it actually will make for a clearer record here and i think it makes sense for the judge to do it i think it's a perfectly reasonable and rational request by trump's team important uh, caitlin collins what's your takeaway from hearing donald trump call the jury selection process and i'm quoting him now largely luck I think it shows what a focus this is. This is going to be what kicks off this entire process, Wolf, starting on Monday. And it has been an intense point of focus from Trump's legal team for the last several days. Even as they've been trying to delay this trial time and time again, 12 efforts in total, none of them which worked, I should note, in the last several weeks, uh, this is going to be going forward, and they have been hyper-focused on what this jury is going to look like, because as Ellie has noted, you know, it's not necessarily about what the actual arguments are going to be, what it's going to look like. It's what the jurors decide that means. I mean, we've seen the, just the emphasis of that in the last several days. And, and it also shows Trump is basically, you know, reluctantly, accept, reluctantly accepted that this is going to be starting on Monday, despite all of those efforts by them to delay it. And, and they know what influence this has on the jury. The question I have is how it changes Trump's behavior inside the courtroom, because we've seen where he's been in the courtroom and there has been a jury in there, whether it was deciding how much E. Jean Carroll was going to be awarded in her defamation uh, damages, where Trump will speak loudly when he talks to his attorneys, or he'll have those moments where he makes clear that he is displeased with what's actually taking place inside the courtroom. Does he do that once this jury has been impaneled? In this case, is going to be a big question. He often thinks that he can sway people. When he says, Wolf, that he's going to testify, I mean, you got to remember that with, with a lot of doubt because he's said that before. I remember during the Robert Mueller investigation, he claimed he was willing to testify. He never once went and sat down and did an interview with him against the advice of his attorneys. They said he shouldn't. And so we'll see if he actually ends up getting on the stand in this case. We will find out. Uh, Ellie, what are the unique challenges of selecting a jury in this case and how long could that take? Well, well, this is a unique historical challenge that everyone's facing come Monday. Now, we have, first of all, a defendant, Donald Trump, who has 100% name recognition. He's universally known and recognized. But we've had that before. We've had situations like that before. What makes Trump especially unique is he tends to evoke such strong emotions politically and personally, such strong feelings for and against, and candidly, in this pool of Manhattanite, it's predominantly against. He also happens to be running for president in it later on this year. And so the trick here is going to be for the judge and the parties to sift through people. First of all, you'll get rid of people who say, I just feel too strongly one way or the other. I can't, uh, I can't decide on that. But the trick is going to be, what do you do with people who say, I can be fair here. Yes, I don't like him politically, but I can be fair here. That's where the instinct and the sort of strategy is going to come into play. Yeah, it'll be very, very sensitive indeed. Caitlin, Monday will be an historic day, as I said, when the first criminal trial of a former U.S. president actually begins. What should we expect from that day? I think it's it's hard to know, Wolf, because, yes, we know what a criminal trial looks like, but we've never seen anything like this before. And, and something that, you know, typically most people probably wouldn't pay attention to, like jury selection, is going to become a huge point of focus. And as Trump is saying, you know, it may be one of the most important factors going into this. And so I, I think it's just to prepare to expect the unexpected. I mean, there won't be cameras inside the courtroom, but our reporters will be in there. We'll obviously be covering the key moments of this and what it looks like and what it means. I think another thing for, for the Trump team that they are watching closely and that it's not, you know, clear until it actually happens what it's going to look like is how he responds when all of these people from his past get up there on the witness stand in front of him. And it's not just the Michael Cohens and the Stormy Daniels and maybe the Karen McDougals. It's also people, Wolf, who used to work closely with him, people like Hope Hicks, who certainly could be called to the stand. All of that is going to be something to watch over the next several weeks as this gets underway.